Hey guys, thanks for checking out this walkthrough of the break-even analysis for your business. Uh, it's very simple, but also can be a little complicated if you're not used to doing this. All you are doing is basically figuring out how much stuff do I need to sell in order to cover all of my costs. So at what point do I break even? I'm not at a loss and I'm not making a profit either. So what you're going to do is you're going to look at the cost for your business. There are two um, categories of costs. There are fixed costs and variable costs. Now, if you're running a like full time, like this is your career business, it's a little bit different because our fixed costs are over a much longer time span. So say like, you know, if you're talking about starting a, oof, I don't know, let's see, a sports, like a gym company, like you, you want to start a gym. Um, you would have all of the like costs that come with getting the building, the equipment, um, any of the light fixtures, like things that would just be there for a long period of time. Those are your fixed costs, things that are not going to change depending on how many people walk through your door and use your gym. But then your variable costs are the things that change based on how many things you sell. So like how many gym memberships you sell is a variable cost with that. Every time someone walks through the door and uses the gym, is there a cost with that? So let's maybe do a better example for this one right now. Uh, let's do a baking company. So that's what I did in my um, other example for cash flow. So we've got our business name, you know, whatever it is, you put it in there. I'm just gonna put baking company. And then your group members, if you're in a group, we'll put it in there. If it's just you, put your name in. So fixed costs, I have a bunch of examples for you, and I'm guessing most of these will not apply to you, especially if you're doing a student business and you are trying to keep your startup costs as low as possible. This number may be zero. That's totally fine. Uh, one thing that will be different for our small businesses versus a larger business is just things like the date range of our projects. So like we're going from, let's see, today's date is 4.23. And let's say we're going from there to, I don't know, let's say we're doing it for a month. So 5.23. I'm guessing yours might be a little bit longer, but that's a month. So 30 days. And that's the entire life scale, lifetime of this business, at least for this document. So you're going to do it based on your project. And when is the predicted end date of your project? I know you may continue your business into the future beyond that, but let's just do it for the project in this exercise. So if you are on day one buying some ingredients or materials in bulk that are going to last you a very long time, um, I have a group right now that are doing fairy hair and they bought tinsel for the hair and they bought like giant packs of the stuff. Like they are not going to run out for years if they continue to do it. So that for us is going to be classed as a fixed cost, even though they technically use a piece of that tinsel every time they do someone's hair, because we want to try and recover that whole cost, not just the cost of the single strand of tinsel. So we've got equipment and tools um, for my baking company. Let's say like I have a bunch of stuff at home already, got the mixer, got the bowls, that sort of stuff, but I want to get like a cookie sheet. Like I don't have a cookie sheet. So I would, I went to the store, I bought a cookie sheet and I bought it for eight dollars so i have eight dollars in equipment and tools software licenses subscriptions there's not really much that you might come in here maybe if you buy a canvas subscription or you're going to set up an email list and you've got a subscription that goes with that but how much is that over the date range of your project so let's say nothing here for me right now website logo any design expenses that you put in there still none for me uh, bulk material purchases. So this is the one where like, I might buy like a giant bag of sugar or flour and it's going to last me well beyond the length of this project. So let's say I did that. I bought, went to Costco, bought a bulk bag of sugar and flour. And let's say I spent $30. Furniture. Is there any like pieces of equipment, furniture that you're buying for this business, like a table maybe, or a stall or anything like that? Nothing in my case. Certifications, licenses, you know, if you owed a Maryland food license, for example, or something like that, you could put that in here. Uniforms, I'm going to buy a t-shirt. Sure, why not? I'm going to go $15 for a t-shirt. And by the way, I really like a place called, oh gosh, what is the name of that? I like Printify for getting shirts done and Queensboro in particular for getting like embroidered stuff done. So just a recommendation there. Vendor fees, like, are you going to do a vendor event and maybe pay some fees for that? So like, let's say I'm going to go to a local farmer's market and there's going to be a $20 table there. So I'm just going to throw that in there. I'm going to do that at least once. Advertising, are you paying for advertising? Are you printing, you know, posters, flyers? Are you doing Facebook ads? Anything like that that are going to cost you money? No, leave it blank. Okay, so that means I have $73 in total fixed costs for this business. They are not going to change. 
regardless of how many cookies I sell. So I could sell zero cookies and I still bought all this stuff and I have to like now recover this cost. The variable costs are the things that are going to go up every time I make one of these products. So let's see like materials, like I've got the, the flour and the sugar, but I need eggs and I need chocolate chips. Like let's just go with a very basic cookie right now. So every time I make a batch of cookies, I'm going to use two eggs and that's you know one sixth of a dozen eggs. So like, let's say I'm going to use 50 cents worth of eggs going with very rounded numbers here. And let's see, that's the eggs, the chocolate chips, a bag of chocolate chips into a batch of cookies. So a small bag, let's say another $2. So maybe $2 50 cents we're up to now. So I'm adding them together. Production fees, anything that you know, goes into it. I put some notes here. So like if you're doing drop shipping, if you're doing like print on demand, so say you have a t-shirt store and every time you place an order on like a Printify or Redbubble or Teespring, there's an, a fee that goes with that, that would go in here. Payment processing fees. Um, if you bill through like PayPal, um, you're going to lose part of the fee to PayPal. If you take credit cards, you will lose part of the fee to Square or Stripe or whoever it is that would go in here. Uh, delivery fees or costs. You might not have anything here. You might have to ship it. So like, do you have to ship the item to somebody? Um, you might have a parent or a friend who's willing to drive you to places, but you know, it costs you five bucks every time you use that service. Or is there any other cost that's popping up? Um, for me, let's see my cookie business. I can't really think of anything. Maybe like uh, some sort of packaging, like a piece of like a Ziploc bag or something like that. Like I could do that to so say, I don't know, a Ziploc bag might be when you break down the number of bags inside a box, it might be like another five cents, five cents, not 50. Okay. So variable cost $2 and 55 cents per unit. And this is like a batch of cookies. Um, so we kind of want to get this down to a single amount. So that would be, let's say we make 10 cookies in a single batch. So I need to divide both these numbers by 10 now. So go down to a single cookie because we want to sell single cookies. So Divide that by 10, I'm now at 25 cents. And my Ziploc, oh gosh, my Ziploc is going down. Actually, I was doing one Ziploc for that, so it's still five cents. So one Ziploc per cookie, got it. So we have 30 cents in variable cost per cookie that I make. So my cookie cost me 30 cents essentially, but there's all this variable, or there's all the fixed costs that I haven't accounted for. Now we go to sell the cookie. So on the revenue side, this is the money in. If you sell more things, like say I have cookies, so cookies, I'm going to replace item number one with what it is. So cookies, let's say I also sold brownies. I can go do that as well. Um, but if you are doing that, remember you have to account for that in your costs too. So just be aware that you will have to you know, go through your costs and make sure you're doing both of them. And for your variable costs, I have it in the note here. If you're doing multiple products, you're going to take the average cost. So a brownie might be slightly more or less to make than a cookie. You just have to make sure you're doing the average of them. But I'm just going to sell cookies. This is a this is a one one trick pony, and I'm going to sell cookies for let's go a dollar fifty each. So that would mean that I would have to make a so a dollar fifty per cookie. My break even, the number of units I'd have to sell is sixty point eight three. But you can't sell a fraction of a cookie. So it rounds up the number I would need to sell to break even is 61 cookies. So at that point I would recoup all of my fixed costs and I would start making a true profit in my business. The chart you've probably noticed over here has been changing as we're going. So it just gives you that visual of where this is. So if I were you know, selling hundred cookies, you would see the red line for revenue. So it's going up straight line because every time we sell a cookie, we bring in a dollar 50. The blue line is our fixed costs. So no matter how many cookies we sell, there's $73 of fixed costs. And then the yellow line is your variable costs on top of your fixed costs. That's your total cost line. So where the red and the yellow intersect is the point at which you are now breaking even. And that is at 61 units. Um, and then that would be $91.25. So if you guys have more questions about this, please do send me an email or check in with your teacher. My email is thefieducator.gmail.com, or you can reach out to me on Instagram at fieducator, and I would love to answer your questions for you. Please do post screenshots if you are finished. Would love to see your break-even charts. 
Oh, fun tool. If you are doing any sort of presentation or your business fair and you want to use this chart, make sure you go click on it, do the three um, dots drop down, and you can download the chart as a PNG. You don't have to do screenshots or anything like that. Same thing with your um, breaking analysis. You can download it and you can download it as a PDF. You can't download it as an image, unfortunately, so you will have to do screenshots for that. But you know, it's nice to have this stuff ready to print out and include in the finances of your business when you go to present about it. All right, all. Thank you very much. Best of luck with your businesses.